The concept of smaller teams or single individuals creating games has been on full display since the gaming industry came to be all the way back in the 1970s. Some of the most iconic and infamous games of the Atari 2600 were made by one person in a matter of months. Even when technology improved and games became larger and more involved, some of the greatest games of all time were created by a handful of developers. The same can be said for the games of today. While the larger companies employ hundreds of programmers, engineers, artists, and designers in order to ship cutting-edge games, equally as impressive games are created absent of those luxuries. Independent game studios sometimes have a fifth of the employees and budgets of their AAA counterparts, placing limitations on what these devs can realistically produce. But these limitations aren't always roadblocks, but instead are used to the studio's advantage. Being able to create something unique and special without all the resources granted to larger studios allows indie devs to sort of think outside the box when it comes to accomplishing their goal while living within their means, so to speak. A great example of this is Playdead's Inside, a fantastic 2.5D puzzle platformer from the creators of Limbo. Released in 2016, Playdead was able to create an unsettling world with striking visuals and an intriguing story that all manages to impress. I say story, but I should clarify. Inside isn't your traditional narrative in terms of, well, anything. There's no spoken dialogue in the entire game. Not one word, save for the occasional grunt from the main character who are referred to as the boy. Inside is kept entirely vague, and the world and events that unfold are experienced by the player directly rather than told through some expositional dialogue. I can't stress how well this is pulled off as the player is constantly presented with new and weirder things about Inside's world that raise more questions than answers. Because of this, it's best to leave as much of the story untouched as it's more powerful when experienced firsthand. With that said, I will be spoiling a bit of what happens just because it's kind of impossible not to when discussing the game. The success of Inside's story and world is dependent on intriguing the player, which it does very well. The very beginning establishes exactly how the rest of the game plays out as the title fades away and the boy slides down a cliffside into a dark forest as he's being pursued by men with flashlights. No main menu, no splash screens, no title sequences. Press start and you're in the game. Immediately, Inside engages you and makes you ask all sorts of questions you may or may not get the answers to. Who's this kid? Where is he? Who are these people and why are they chasing him with such ferocity? Even when you think you get the answers to some of these questions, something else occurs to throw your theories out the window. The events of Inside create a narrative that's totally up to the player's interpretation, which I think is spectacular. The world of Inside is strange, unnerving, and at times depressing. It's clear that Inside is set in some post-apocalyptic world with how abandoned and desolate most of the locations are. It's also clear that something odd is happening involving some sort of parasite, zombified humans, and mind control. Speaking personally, I was picking up on subtle statements about free will, the struggle of the everyday worker, and the ills of the monopolistic corporations of the world. But then again, that's just me, and that's what's great about inside storytelling. It's up to your interpretation of what you experienced, especially the ending. Like I said, I won't spoil anything specific, but needless to say, the world of Inside is unique, which is elevated by its visual style. Playdead's previous title, Limbo, had a distinct visual style as well, with a very minimalistic shadow-like presentation, where most, if not all, of the game was black and white. It was a very unique for the time, even being the inspiration for other games in the future. Inside feels like an artistic evolution from that style. It's similar, yet very different in all the right ways. Inside has a monochromatic sort of feel. There are very stark black and white visuals, but there are a lot of varying grays and muted colors. This presents a very appropriate tone for the game that matches the events that play out. One of the most impressive aspects of Inside's visual presentation is the fact that it's an entirely seamless experience. In movie lingo, it's all in one take. No cutscenes or fade to black transitions to new areas. Theoretically, one could play through the entire game in one shot and wouldn't be broken up by a loading screen or pause in the action. This means that the camera is just as important to the visuals as the gameplay. Because of its 2.5D nature, players are almost always running from left to right or right to left. Just because Inside is limited to just the X and Y axis doesn't mean its presentation has to be. Due to a more dynamic camera than most platformers, Inside has some tremendous shot compositions throughout its runtime, showcasing just how beautiful this game can be while lacking the high-res textures or high-poly counts of AAA games. Throw in some fantastic use of its lighting and you have one extremely impressive game on the visual front. Aside from just its fidelity, Playdead also mixes in a more meta concept of player agency with its visual style. While the majority of Inside has this black, white, and gray color palette, color still plays a very big part in the game. The boy, as well as important environmental details, are all colorized. This can result in some pretty striking visuals, as a blue sky pokes through a destroyed building, or a lonely switch blinks in a dark warehouse. This not only creates a great visual contrast, but also highlights switches, objects, mechanics, or anything the player needs to progress. Inside's visuals tie its presentation and gameplay together beautifully like most games don't. As previously mentioned, Inside is a puzzle platformer. Platforming is less traditional and more cinematic.
cinematic, drawing comparisons to classic Oddworld games or Eric Chahi titles of the 1990s like Out of This World or Heart of Darkness. Like those titles, Inside is a very simple game. There are really three actions the player has at their disposal, movement, jumping, and context-sensitive actions like grabbing boxes, flipping switches, or pulling open doors. That's pretty much it, and while that sounds like it might be limiting, Inside makes tremendous use of these three options. There's a lot of weight to every aspect of Inside's physics when it comes to movement, jumping, climbing, or interacting with one's environment in both a physical sense as well as a narrative one, I suppose. Like Play Dead's previous title, Inside's protagonist is very fragile. Falling from a decent height will lead to a swift death, meaning lining up your jumps and timing is important. Jumping gaps or from one ledge to another feels like a Herculean task in and of itself, as the boy will grab onto ledges for dear life. That's why I categorize Inside as more of a cinematic platformer rather than your traditional insert mascot platformer here. This almost physics-based platforming is not only fun, but it can also be a bit tense, and coupling that with the visuals and the complete lack of music creates this palpable atmosphere that you very rarely feel in platformers. Along with the platforming, Inside's other gameplay element is solving puzzles, which is the most enjoyable aspect of the game hands down. Inside as a whole has a great difficulty curve, due in part to how well the puzzles are scaled. You'll start out pushing blocks to reach ledges and eventually be maneuvering multiple humanoids around and with mind control devices to hit buttons, open doors, or flip switches to progress. Some of my favorites combine the puzzle and platforming experiences into one. Scenarios like having to trick attack dogs into a longer route in order to escape, pretending to be a zombie-like humanoid to avoid getting caught by security cameras, or evading searchlights or strong gusts of wind behind objects in the environment to cross certain areas safely. Inside's pace is about as consistent as its difficulty curve, always knowing when to have a quiet moment in between platforming sections or puzzles. Inside as a whole is a very effortless experience, I find. Traveling between major areas gives players time to reflect on what the hell is actually going on. These walking sections last about as long as they need to before you come across a problem you need to solve, be it platforming or puzzling. This is where Inside's visuals come back into play in a really neat way. Like I mentioned earlier, the world is almost completely black, white, and gray, with the only bit of color being the boy and important objects in the environment you have to interact with. This design choice is great because it relies on the player's ingenuity rather than just telling the player to push that button or grab this object. Play Dead designed their game around the player agency in more ways than one. Just as you're thrust into the world of Inside on a narrative level, so too are you thrown to the wolves when it comes to how to play. There's no tutorial, zero tips, no assistance nothing. Inside is confident in itself and trusts the player to pick up on these visual cues enough to understand how its mechanics work, which is why its simplistic three mechanic system is so effective. I adore this game design approach because it's such a stark contrast to how games are nowadays. There's a difference between accessibility and hand-holding, between aiding those players who may have a disability and insulting the player's intelligence. I understand why tips and hints and tutorials exist and I'm not bashing anyone who genuinely needs them to enjoy games. There's been countless articles and essays about how World 1-1 of Super Mario Bros is the quintessential game design technique and teaching your player how to play your game without outright spelling it out for them, so I won't bore you with the details, but I will say I 100% agree. Having the player essentially teach themselves how to play your game instead of telling them how adds this small yet tangible sense of accomplishment that goes a long way in enjoying said game. Inside is a great example of doing a lot with very little. Its minimalistic art style looks beautiful while not utilizing cutting edge technology. Its story has no voice acting or written dialogue, yet it can weave a creepy tale that each player takes something different away from. Its hands off approach to game design tells players nothing yet teaches them everything. That's what impressed me most from inside. The fact that a game's team size and budget can be dwarfed by the big players in the industry yet deliver on something most AAA devs couldn't produce if they wanted to. Playdead's restrictions forced them to get creative with their visuals, their storytelling, and their game design, and resulted in a very unique and special title that puts on full display the versatility of the games industry.